What is going on, everybody? James Hancock here. I just got out of seeing an insanely cool movie that I think a lot of people are going to flip out about, Uncut Gems starring Adam Sandler. Admittedly, Sandler's been cranking out a lot of unwatchable crap in recent years over at Netflix, but this is something different entirely. This is a film by the Safdie brothers, two of the most talented up-and-coming young filmmakers in the business, in my opinion. They were already on my radar because of Good Time, one of the most stylish hardcore films of 2017, but Uncut Gems has completely confirmed my already very high opinion of their abilities. The Safdie brothers are that increasingly rare thing these days, auteur filmmakers with a unique style and vision making dangerous movies geared exclusively toward those moviegoers who enjoy getting immersed in the dark side of human beings. And as someone who 11 years ago fell in love with the city of New York and decided to make it my permanent home, I'm overjoyed to see some young filmmakers bringing the city to life on the screen in such an intoxicating fashion with both good time as well as uncut gems. A24 is the perfect home for them, and I should add that A24 is having a ridiculously good year. I haven't seen half the films they released, but just their slate alone would be enough for me to say that 2019 has been a pretty good year for movies. Climax, Under the Silver Lake, Midsommar, The Lighthouse, and now Uncut Gems are all beautiful reminders of the power of movies. I couldn't care less about seeing remakes of classic cartoons or movies that offer nostalgia and nothing else. I want to see movies that electrify the viewer and give the audience an exhilarating experience that they will never forget. And having now seen Uncut Gems, I'll definitely be rearranging my top 10 list for the year of 2019 before I post it later this month. So if you haven't seen the trailer, Uncut Gems is this brilliant character study about a man named Howard Ratner who invites stress, chaos, and danger into his life with every action he takes. He really knows no other way to live. He's an adrenaline junkie who's obsessed with basketball and he loves to gamble, but he also runs a store in the Diamond District in Manhattan, which is basically 47th Street between 5th and 6th, meaning that on any given day, he has piles of cash and precious stones going in and out the door, meaning lots of opportunities to get neck deep in trouble. Bar and lending to some genuinely merciless characters on both sides of the law, all while carrying on a reckless affair with his smoking hot girlfriend played by Julia Fox, who works for him, a choice that is currently running his marriage into the ground. He owes money all over the place, but he's constantly hustling and lying, trying to stay one step ahead of everyone, making bets that he shouldn't within his business and on basketball. He's the master of over-promising and then constantly under-delivering, always bullshitting people just so he can chase his losses a little bit more. He's completely addicted to his way of life. And this is all basically just the setup before the actual plot gets underway. A plot that creates an atmosphere of such overwhelming tension and anxiety that it's impossible not to squirm in your seat in horror while watching the story unfold. What's great about the Safdie brothers and their approach to filmmaking is how they're able to take the audience to the breaking point emotionally and then hold them there indefinitely, never letting the tension break or for the audience to relax. The overall effect can be exhausting, but they give us so much raw entertainment value along the way that you can't pull your eyes away from the screen. I always love it when a filmmaker invites us into such a clearly defined world, especially an environment that I know very little about. I know almost nothing about the NBA, and as a wasp, it's safe to say I know very little about the Jewish culture of the Diamond District that this movie explores so beautifully. Haggling and negotiating is a way of life in this world, and as smart and savvy as Adam Sandler's character might be, his addictive personality and never-ending appetite for risk keeps getting him into trouble with folks who are not going to show any mercy. His entire life is like this giant tightrope routine over this enormous wood chipper. There's this incredible scene where Adam Sandler's at this huge family dinner with all sorts of ritual and ceremony, and sitting across the table from him is one of the people who spends the entire movie chasing Adam Sandler with a pack of armed collectors. But during the dinner, they essentially have a ceasefire. But back in the real world, it's game on. This movie's ideal for Sandler in that it plays to his strengths as a sports junkie. He genuinely loves sports. And it's a pleasure watching Sandler interact with basketball players who are shopping in a store, or even better, watching Adam Sandler completely flipping out, trying to see if his incredibly sophisticated and elaborate bets and parlays are going to pay off while he's watching games. I nearly rubbed the skin off my palms from all the anxiety, and because Sandler's such a likable guy, we're able to keep rooting for him to succeed even as the walls start closing in around him and he finds himself in what amounts to a life-or-death situation. 
I grew up watching Sandler and SNL, and I couldn't begin to tell you how many times my friends and I sat around watching Billy Madison in college. The ability to have entire conversations consisting of nothing but quotes from that movie was the definition of wit as far as we were concerned. And we've seen Sandler do dramatic work before in movies like The Meyerowitz Stories and Punch Drunk Love, but as far as I'm concerned, this is the best performance of his career. Seeing him scream in protest and going berserk throughout so much of this movie had me howling every step of the way, even if I was sweating over what his final fate might be. But I should give a shout out to some of the other actors. Lakeith Stanfield, Adina Menzel, and Eric Bogosian all do fantastic work. Kevin Garnett shows some solid acting chops as well. And as someone who played 21 seasons in the NBA, obviously he knows how to handle the basketball scenes just fine. But as someone who loves the power of pure raw cinema, the photographic style, the use of color, the overall ambiance of the music, it sets the perfect tone to make us feel like we're exploring a completely different world. I loved all the scenes featuring all the nightlife in New York, and you can tell that Adam Sandler's character is a creature of this world. He absolutely belongs. But sadly, he's just a reckless individual whose compulsive habits have no limit, and every time you think he's about to solve all those problems and bring the plane in for a safe landing, he's like, all right, well, one more reckless bet, one more terrible decision, and you just spend the entire movie sweating. But getting back to the world that these characters inhabit, I've lived in the city for more than a decade, but the world that these characters live in, it might as well be a different universe as far as I'm concerned, and I was absolutely riveted the entire ride. As far as criticisms are concerned, I don't really have any. The only vague criticism I might have is that I don't expect I'll be indulging in repeat viewings of this movie just because I don't think my heart can take it. But I was thrilled beyond words to have such a great movie-going experience this close to the end of the year. I think the sky's the limit as far as the Safety brothers are concerned, and I'll be very curious to see what projects they line up next. In any event, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Hope you enjoyed this review. Please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, all the good stuff. And if you want to talk more about any of the topics I mentioned, hunt me down on Twitter. But I hope everyone has an amazing weekend. But more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.